Evening at happening now, protesters lined up outside of the Sangamon County building demanding answers in the death of a Springfield woman who was shot and killed by a Sangamon County deputy. Police responded to a report of a prowler around 1 a.m. on July 6th. This was in the 2800 block of Hoover Avenue. Now, during the incident, a deputy shot and killed Sonia Massey. News Channel 20's Carson Gordy joins us live in Springfield after attending the event. Carson. With calls and chants, protesters made it clear they have a lot of questions that they want to get answered, along with accountability for the death of Sonia Massey. What do we want? Body yes. jail! When do we want it? Now! Say her name! Sonia Massey! Say her name! Sonia Massey! Say her name! Sonia Massey! Sonia Massey, a 36-year-old woman who was shot by a Sangamon County deputy after responding to a call of a prowler. Right now, very few details are being released, including whether or not Massey made the initial 911 call that led to deputies responding to the neighborhood. Sigmund County Coroner Jim Allman confirmed Friday that Massey died from a single gunshot wound to the head. To describe the heartbreak over the loss of someone, she was a mother, she has children. That is an impact for generations that is going to be affected, that is going to be laid upon that family. A Sigmund County official says the deputies involved in the shooting are on administrative leave amid the investigation. But more questions remain. Massey's family has now retained civil rights attorney Benjamin Crump. His clients have included George Floyd and Earl Moore Jr.'s families. In a statement, Crump said in part, quote, It is extremely hard to imagine how a woman who calls the police out of fear of an intruder ends up shot in the head by the police at her own home. We do want a transparent investigation. However, we do need answers. We need answers of what happened to Sonia Massey. Her family should not have to wonder what happened to her in those 30 minutes between the time she called the police and got shot. The Illinois State Police is currently leading the investigation into the shooting. And when I reached out to them earlier today, they sent back a statement via email that said, in quote, in order to protect the integrity of the legal process and the right to a fair trial in the event that charges are filed, the body worn camera video and additional information related to the incident will not be released at this time. I'm Carson Gordy. Back to you. All right, thanks, Carson. Now, we did reach out to ISP, the Sangamon County Sheriff's Office, and the Sangamon County State's Attorney, but they all declined in interview. Up late with us, I'm Dawn Sterling. We continue our coverage now into the investigation following the death of Sonia Massey. Now, the former deputy being charged in her death has pled not guilty. Sean Grayson, who you see here, entered his plea in court today. He's facing three counts of first-degree murder, aggravated battery with a firearm and official misconduct. And Sean Grayson will be held in jail until his trial after Sangamon County prosecutors argued he's a risk to the community. News Channel 20's Carson Gordy joins us with an update. Carson. In a standing room only courtroom, prosecutors argued why former Sangamon County Deputy Sean Grayson was unjustified in shooting and killing Sonny Massey. Tonight, we've obtained the dispatch call from the night Massey was shot and killed. And you can start 26, correction, 2868 Hoover, 2868 Hoover, units on scene are 1078 shots fired. Earlier that morning, Sean Grayson and an unnamed Sagamon County deputy responded to a 911 call from Sonia Massey, who called the police after concerns of a prowler. The deputies entered the home. The charging documents say Grayson made a comment about a pot on the stove. Massey set the pot of water down on the counter. Documents say that despite distance and relative cover, Grayson pulled his handgun and threatened to shoot Massey in the face. She then put her hands in the air and said, I'm sorry, while ducking for cover behind a counter. Grayson got closer and continued to yell at Massey to put the pot down. He then fired three shots, striking her once in the face. 2868 Hoover Street, County's out requesting EMS. There's shots fired, sitting at a female shot in the head. In court Thursday, a judge denied Grayson pretrial release after arguments that he's a danger to the community. Some people in the room erupted in applause. An Illinois State Police investigation says Grayson was not justified to use deadly force. Sigmund County prosecutors say Grayson instructed the other deputy to not provide medical aid to Massey. Grayson's lawyer argued that he is not a flight risk and that complications from colon cancer puts his safety at risk while in jail. He faces five criminal counts, including three counts of first degree murder. He faces life in prison if convicted. Grayson's body camera was not on during the shooting. It was turned on after. Footage was caught on the other deputy's camera. I'm Carson Gordy. Back to you.
August 26th. An audio from the Sangamon County Dispatch states a contradiction from Sonia Massey's official cause of death. A criminal investigation states Massey was shot in the face by Sean Grayson. Here is audio from after that shooting. Just confirm self-inflicted. Two on half. Abby County's update. I didn't. Self-inflicted. Okay, thank you. We asked Sangamon County if they knew who contacted dispatch and told them the gunshots were self-inflicted. An official tells News Channel 20 he was not aware of the audio or who would have made that claim. The body camera video from the night of that shooting will be publicly released on Monday. Be sure to stay with News Channel 20 on air and online for the latest on this story. Sonia Massey's family has hired well-known civil rights attorney Ben Crump following her death. News Channel 20's Carson Gordy joins us live in Springfield now with the message Crump has after attending Massey's funeral today. Carson? Ben Crump has represented many black families who were killed by the police, including George Floyd. Crump says Sonny Massey's family deserves, in quote, full justice for criminal and civil penalties for those responsible for her death. He says the body cam footage of Massey's death was shocking and reminds him of other death, such as Earl Moore Jr. and George Floyd. Crump was asked whether he plans to file a wrongful death lawsuit against Sangamon County. We plan on exploring every legal avenue to get full justice for Sonia Massey, just like we did with George Floyd, just like we did with Breonna Taylor, just like we did with Tyree Nichols. Crump added he thinks civil lawsuits against local governments can deter future cases of police brutality. He says he appreciates Sangamon County being able to charge Grayson within 10 days of the shooting, but he says it is vital that he is convicted and sentenced to the full extent of the law. I'm Carson Gordy. Back to you. Thank you, Carson. Grayson has been charged with three counts of first degree murder. His next hearing is scheduled for August 26th. The Springfield community came together tonight to honor the life of Sonia Massey in a peaceful manner. News Channel 20's Carson Gordy was there and joins us now. Carson, what was the feeling out there tonight? With a march and a barbecue, hundreds of local residents gathered to peacefully remember Sonia Massey and pray that she earns justice after the fatal shooting. It was very powerful, um, just seeing all the people come out from our community, different ages, different races, different sexual orientations, all coming together um, for one cause, which is to get justice for Sonia Massey. Oh, I mean, I'm here here with misty eyes right now, literally, because even just talking about this. Because with the Illinois State Police releasing the body cam footage of the fatal shooting of Sonia Massey, organizers thought it was important to provide an outlet for the public to peacefully gather and honor her life. And have people come up here and be able to express themselves on the open mic. The kids are playing basketball. We've got face painters and we've got free haircuts and free food. So the family of Sonia Massey comes in peace. They don't want anybody destroying our community. And we have to come together, you know, to spread love and peace. Um, I knew her personally. It was my friend's mother. Just, uh, just was always happy, it felt like. I never seen her sad personally. But I've only seen her a few times anyway, but I just knew her. And I feel like she always gave me hugs, and it was just sad. The people I spoke to who knew her said she was nice, gentle, and God-fearing. My mother, she was right there next to me. We just hugged. It was, I started crying. I just couldn't pull myself together. It was very really sad. There was also a petition being circulated around the event. They're looking for an investigation into Sangamon County's decision to hire Sean Grayson. Massey's family and their lawyers have brought up concerns about his arrest record and working for six departments in four years. I'm Carson Gordy. Back to you. Thank you, Carson. At this time, we are still working on confirming the reasons why Grayson left each individual department. Attorney Ben Crump, who is taking on the case, as well as Sonia Massey's family, addressed the public for the first time after that body camera footage was released. News Channel 20's Carolina Hassett was there and she has more on their emotional plea for change. It was another emotional day here at the NAACP in Springfield where Sonia Massey's family faced the public for the first time. Attorney Ben Crump describing that video as shocking, heinous and disturbing. 
Crump was joined by the Massey family and Senator Doris Turner. Crump said that black women don't get the consideration or respect in America. He referenced one of her last words, which were, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Where is the humanity? Where is the training until we get justice for Sonia Massey? We rebuke this discriminatory criminal justice system in the name of Jesus. Crump said he will fight for complete justice for Sonia Massey, including figuring out how the deputy got hired, as well as urging Congress to pass the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. Now, during the press conference, Sonia Massey's father demanded Sheriff Jack Campbell resign. In Springfield, I'm Carolina Hassett. Back to you. Thanks, Carolina. Crump said experts are currently going through and studying the body camera footage. Ben Crump announcing today at the news conference that Sonia Massey's family met with Governor J.B. Pritzker and Lieutenant Governor Juliana Stratton. Fox Illinois' Carolina Hassett has more on the emotional meeting and what the governor is promising to change. Carolina? That's right. I'm here outside the Union Baptist Church in Springfield where that meeting took place. Attorney Ben Crump says it was an emotional meeting between the family and the governor and it lasted about an hour. He says he's promising a fair and transparent investigation. Now, Crump said Sonia's family members shared their concerns about the video to the governor. Crump added this case is personal to Lieutenant Stratton because she is the mother of four black daughters. He said Governor Pritzker promised the state will use all of its resources to make sure that equal justice is paramount. They understood that oftentimes Sonia Masseys of the world don't get due process of the law and that they were committed to saying this is going to be a fair and transparent investigation and process at every level. Now, Crump added that the family is continuing to demand answers like why the deputy was even hired in the first place and wants more consequences for officers who were involved in situations like this one. In Springfield, I'm Carolina Hassett. Back to you. Thanks, Carolina. We did reach out to Governor Pritzker's office about the meeting. They told us that while the details were discussed with the Massey family will remain private, they are committed to further efforts for racial justice in Illinois. For the full statement from the governor, you can visit our website, foxillinois.com. Senator Doris Turner has been working alongside civil rights attorney Ben Crump and Sonia Massey's family to demand justice. News Channel 20's Carolina Hassett has more on a new bill that would crack down on law enforcement hiring regulations. That's right, Sonia Massey's family is demanding stricter laws for police officers so something like this doesn't happen again. Former Sheriff's Deputy Sean Grayson, who has been charged with first degree murder for the death of Sonia Massey, had a previous arrest record. This included two DUIs back in 2015 and 2016, both of them being Class A misdemeanors and driving on a suspended license. He's also worked for several other law enforcement agencies before Sangamon County. This poses the question Sonia Massey's father is demanding, which which is why he got hired here in the first place. He said that Senator Turner is putting forth a bill to say that you shouldn't be allowed if you are uh, accused of some kind of an ethical violation of policy within one law enforcement department be able to resign without having any findings and then go to the next law enforcement agency. We spoke to Senator Doris Turner last week who told us she's in the process of looking at past legislation and will propose new legislation to strengthen it and make sure organizations are abiding by those rules. Now she added she wants to make sure there's nothing found in officers' backgrounds that would affect how they do their job. In Springfield, I'm Carolina Hassett. Back to you. Thanks, Carolina. Senator Turner also told us last week she will be looking into body camera regulations as well and may propose new legislation to crack down on those laws. We reached out to Senator Turner's office for a comment and have yet to receive a response. Despite the whirlwind investigation and body camera footage being released just yesterday, the family is taking time to reflect on who Sonia Massey was. News Channel 20's Carolina Hassett has more on their heartfelt remarks. 
During a news conference today at the NAACP, the Massey family was asked for the first time to share who Sonia Massey was. Sonia was the daughter of Donna Massey and James Wilburn. She was a mother of two children and had three siblings. Today, her oldest son, Malachi, was asked to share what his mother was like. She was loving, caring. She knew how to cook. Love her cooking. Yeah, I ate it up every day. <laughs> the best cooking ever ate, go rock. Yeah, she was just a ball of energy. She could talk to anybody. Like, we go anywhere, she want to talk to them, she go talk to them. She just, I don't know, she was just a loving, like a lovable person. She always helped people, too. That's the thing about her. She helps everyone. Malachi said during the conference he has no words for what happened to his mother and that he cannot bring himself to watch the rest of the body camera footage. Now, Senator Doris Turner said the Masseys used to live on the same block as her and she was friends with the family. She described Sonia as soft spoken and said she will make sure that Sonia's memory lives on. In studio, I'm Carolina Hassett. Back to you. Thanks, Carolina. For all of our coverage on Sonia Massey's investigation, you can visit our website, newschannel20.com. The family of Sonia Massey is demanding answers. They say they were not given the correct information on what led her to being shot when they arrived on the scene July 6th. News Channel 20's Carolina Hassett has more on what rights the family of victims have in these kinds of situations. Sonia Massey's family is saying they were never told that the deputy was the one that shot her and didn't find out until the next day. This poses the question of what kind of rights families of victims have when they first arrive on the scene. When we arrived on scene, we were trying to figure out what happened. We were looked at like they didn't know what was going on. They told, they laughed at us. Family members of Sonia Massey demanding answers after they said they were not told the whole truth about what happened to her. I once was out told that the officer did it. They tell that made me believe that it was a neighbor or somebody that did it. This posed the question as to what rights families of victims have when they first arrive on scene. Unfortunately, there's still very few rights in this area. Renee Williams from the National Center for Victims of Crime says that it is unfair victims have very few rights when it comes to these situations. She says even in situations where law enforcement knows what happened, there is still an investigation and police do not have to release information when families arrive at the scene. Most deputies would not um, be able to tell a family directly what happened. Um, even if they witnessed it, they, they would have to work through the investigative process. Massey's family claims that they were misled about who fired the shot that killed her, and they had to find out that it was deputy involved through the Internet. That's just not best practice. That's that's horrible. Things were not followed correctly there. What we encourage law enforcement to do is any facts that they do have that they are going to release to the media, you release to the family first. So what rights can families bring to the table? Before an investigation, they don't really have a right to demand anything. They have a right to demand an investigation um, and the answers that come from that investigation, but they can be locked out of the investigation. Williams added that it is unfair how little rights victims have 24 hours to even weeks after the crime and that they tend to receive more rights once they are in the court system. In studio, I'm Carolina Hassett. Back to you. Thanks, Carolina. We reached out to the Sangamon County Sheriff's Office to learn what its protocols are when it comes to telling family information on the scene. We did not receive a response. Making sure her case stays front and center tonight, a rally made its way through Springfield calling for justice. News Channel 20's Carson Gordy joins us in studio with the latest. Carson. With calls and chants, protesters made it clear that they want justice and accountability for the death of Sonia Massey. protest had started in a parking lot. There's a senseless killing. And it's been happening so, so many times. Before marching a half a mile to the Singamon County Complex. Top to bottom. Accountability top to bottom. Nationwide. It, this, this is beautiful, the fact that it's nationwide. Hundreds of people continued to call and chant for justice for Sonia Massey, not wanting her name to fade away after she was shot and killed by a Singamon County deputy. Justice, no peace. Prosecute the police. The shooting of Sonia Massey has become a national story, with questions being raised about the former deputy Sean Grayson's arrest history and six jobs in law enforcement in four years. Signs read, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. One of Massey's last words to the deputy who shot her. We rebuke any evil. People said the protests need to continue. This is what we need to do every day. 
and cannot let our good sisters name go in vain. Put holding everybody accountable. Yeah. I'm here because y'all hold me accountable. Yeah. And I want to see that same thing to everybody in the county board yeah. building. Yeah. Hold them accountable. Yeah. As the protest is wrapping up, a woman called on people to attend the Sangamon County board meeting on August 13th and voiced their concerns to officials. I'm Carson Gordy. Back to you. Thanks, Carson. Happening tomorrow, civil rights attorney Ben Crump will be holding another news conference with more details on the case. Now, according to his office, the autopsy report for Sonia Massey is set to be released tomorrow.